The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Burgess Shroff over here. And for those who don't know me, I'm a member of BBG. So on behalf of BBG Mumbai, I would like to welcome and thank you all for affording us your valuable time to join us on this Monday afternoon. Uh, this webinar that has been organized by BBG Mumbai in collaboration with Next Dime, formerly known as SKP Group, brings on a very, very relevant topic that is as the impact of COVID-19 on cybersecurity and data protection. Be it at work, be it at home, or be it while even working from home, cybersecurity and data protection is a very relevant topic for every one of us. But this has become even more relevant in these trying and testing times when scamsters are taking advantage of the sad situation, especially when we are working from home. These scamsters usually play on the psychology of people, knowing they are bored and hence more gullible. So they try to attract these gullible people to various offers. India's Home Ministry, for example, has reported an 86 to 90% spike in cyber crimes over just the past four to five weeks. These cyber crimes are ranging from phishing attacks like your business enterprise, compromised PC, I'm sure the speaker for the afternoon may will elaborate a bit on this more uh, to co sort of uh, convincing people to click on phishing links, et cetera, to steal your money, to steal the information. And some are even going to some weird extent. For example, there is one fraudster who tried to sell the world's tallest statue, that is the Statue of Unity, claiming the proceeds would use to, to help the Gujarat government fund its fight against the coronavirus. I found that pretty hilarious, actually. Um, there are many other scams that are going on at this time. For example, the free charging of your mobile phones and uh, Netflix subscriptions, etc. Even the Prime, Prime Minister's uh, Care Fund is, has been kind of duplicated. Uh, there are frauds being carried out. There are about 9,000 people who registered a complaint with CyberCell. And this is mostly, most of them have been NRIs. Even the same thing goes with the World Health Organization. Uh, these cyber crimes, uh, crime gangs basically have registered unmasked domains with a coronavirus connection, which is fooling a lot of us. So these criminals are not just targeting the general public with these session scams, but also the corporates, especially now the remote workers, when executives are working from home under stressful conditions, that could leave them more likely to forget routine security procedures and fall victim to a phishing attack. Cool. So let's move on to the speaker for this afternoon. Uh, let's please welcome Mr. Krishnadan Bhatt, who is the Chief Information Security Advisor at Nextdime. Uh, to briefly introduce Mr. Bhatt, he has over 14 years of experience in the field of assurance services. He has extensive experience working with the IT, travel, tourism, logistics, media, entertainment, banking, and port banking and poultry industries. He's a certified information systems auditor, CISA, and a certified information system security professional. He specializes in technology risk consulting, ERP implementations, and moderating training related to technology. He has handled several engagements at various international forums. Uh, before I move this on to the speaker for the afternoon, uh, just one last very important point. All the uh, attendees are automatically have been put on mute. And if you have any questions, there should be a box available for you where you can type in your questions and send it across. And either during the course of the presentation or post the presentation, the speaker will take these questions up for you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Butt, it's over to you now. That was a very elaborate introduction. I'm on board. So, Prince. <clears throat> 
these are uh, very amazing and different times for each one of us. And uh, to couple it up, we were all forced into going for work from home. And that has created organizations to shift people. This is one of the biggest examples of human movement in the history of mankind, where the entire globe and the global population has stopped stepping outside and working from home. In a very short span of time, with no intimate whatsoever, organizations had to scramble and scurry to take their people and continue their business as usual. These are challenging and extremely disturbing times. To add to that, the hurry in which this was organized, the short notice in which organizations had to make people operate from home, we found that employees as well as employers both are exposed to a plethora of risks in terms of data and cybersecurity. All along, the world operated in an environment where controls were centralized. People were used to working from a consolidated office space. Locational differences were joined together through a network infrastructure that was managed centrally and was known as the office infrastructure. And here we are today, where each one of us is sitting on a distributed endpoint, trying to gabble with the reality and also adjusting to the fact that this could be the new real. This could be the new norm till things actually settle down and we may remember a time and place when we were working together from a office premises. Interesting. Collaborative tools, use of free to use software, use of Netflix and other entertainment systems over the internet have only opened up more areas of risk and exposure than we were aware of. An unmonitored infrastructure, assets distributed across with no clear visibility or single point of accountability, things have become extremely challenging and difficult today. To understand the situation a little more, let me take you through the radar. So this is nothing but risk, assumptions, issues, dependencies, action and repairs. What's the biggest risk or a single point of risk that we all face today? Limited control on assets operating on work from home. Limited access to risk and support teams to monitor, manage, review, prevent assets that are being used. Assumptions. Most people are connected through unsecured networks or open dongles. Six months back, the world was grappling with not to use UI enabled data cards. American government had issued orders banning UI enabled devices. Majority of the data cards in India by the major service providers work on UI data cards. So that's the first open ended disk which is already created. Something which is against the advisory of the Big Apple, considered to be a pioneer in protection, cybersecurity, and internet, the way we understand and know it. Second, 
the public sector provided broadband connections are again a highly unprotected work environment they create sheer malware exposure in an unintended manner so knowingly or unknowingly we all are exposed to risks the biggest issues areas of concern for employers is data sharing information which is considered critical and confidential to the organization is uploaded on the cloud by employees without any monitoring employees are becoming victims of malware you have sophisticated attacks in these times enticing you to click on links for unbelievable deals you have mails which are designed to seek empathy and sympathy from people making them vulnerable to financially donate you have groups that dedicatedly invest in sharing fake news there are two key issues stakes and endpoints for a central monitoring agency to bring out a clampdown organizational it teams also are working with limited infrastructure and no support whatsoever management of organizations have limited visibility and resources to ensure that all is in order most of the office policies are now non compliant the biggest risk is an unupdated antivirus on end user machine unfortunately most of us are not aware how to update it manually some of us or a few of us are not even aware how to identify where is the antivirus on my machine these are creating precarious risks unknowingly that may cause damages that have unintended consequences dependencies are from high availability firewalls secure vpn enhanced surveillance and monitoring tools very few organizations especially in the msme sector visualize this scenario organizations and manufacturing sector never anticipated a complete lockdown scenario as part of their disaster recovery planning so investment in this infrastructure high availability firewalls secure vpn enhanced surveillance and monitoring tools is scarce this exponentially opens up vulnerabilities it makes people exposed to threats that have unintended consequences and organizations exposed to losses both financially and from a contractual obligation perspective what is the need of the r we look and see and think back if you have an opportunity on a day to day post this lockdown to invest in high availability firewalls remote working is going to remain for longer periods of time invest in technologies that support free log on vpn client having a vpn is not the end it's the first step towards ensuring connectivity of the end user to your organization traversing the common internet path through an end to end connection making it secure ensuring it is controllable are some good practices that we we'll discuss in this session it infra teams outsource it infra vendors 
need to look into enhanced server and network monitoring a plan to enable cloud solutions enhance security monitoring solutions effective cloud security needs to be put in place work from home paradox for an employee a business user a customer a vendor there are a plethora of paradoxes that they are operating with they need to do business as usual they need to offer service as usual at the same time they need to be aware of the risks and the various downfalls and pitfalls of their or actions so in terms of infrastructure as people are grappling with network connectivity space to operate managers are finding it challenging to handle and manage their teams collaborative tools like zoom microsoft teams cisco webex go to meetings are coming with a plethora of unidentified vulnerabilities it is becoming a challenge on the appropriate usage of technology nobody is sure whether he is using the right devices and whether that ensures he is safe from any kind of cyber attacks in an environment of lack of controls or no monitoring controls browsing risks downloading of unauthorized software have become the new challenges cyber attacks designed ransomware attacks designed through mobile applications has been the new buzzword as burj is rightly pointed out someone had the audacity to sell the biggest statue in the world for collecting funds to help government of gujarat this is an amazing brazenness and audacity of the attacker to be sure that during this time it is very difficult for someone to actually come back and trace back the origin of such kind of mischief there is a massive build up of infrastructure by cyber criminals to lure targets and collect credentials and other sensitive information to state an example you get information or messages from your banks making you aware that you can claim moratorium usually these are disguised fake messages one need to be aware of where it tries to collect your personal information for it to be misused at a later point in time a lot of websites in the guise of providing relevant covid-19 information are disguised to collect and extract information from your mobile phones and carry out financial transactions so please be aware of your browsing habits phishing attack is another big problem emails which look genuine which look like coming from your organization itself may not be the appropriate ones and once you click on the link you can become a victim of a phishing attack which may lead to data breaches and other kind of challenges non bank systems are one of the biggest vulnerabilities that are getting created during this time most employees are not aware of the how and why of doing things and they find it challenging 
to handle and interpret. This paradox creates more problems than solutions. Controls. The controls that we speak about, which most of us discuss and we hear around, is that it's effective to have cloud as a strategy. Organizations who operate it from the cloud add it much easier for them to affect this short notice movement. Unlike organizations which work on an on-premise infrastructure. Unfortunately, friends, the word cloud gives a false sense of security to most of us. Even under normal situations, in the past, we have heard organizations who state we are on the cloud, so we need to be protected. What they don't realize is that cloud is nothing but a replica of your existing system, but at a third party location. It has its own pitfalls, it has its own challenges, and one needs to be aware of how to use the cloud infrastructure safely and securely. Some of the good things that can be noted is to enable dual authentication while accessing your cloud infrastructure. This helps to protect and provide access, relevant access on need to know basis. Also, it indirectly gives assurance to the risk team that only the intended user is the one who has been using the cloud infrastructure. Next, if possible, try to use encrypted drives to protect your data or information. Try to enable encryption in your cloud infrastructure. Also, it's a good practice to have encrypted laptops and encrypted desktops where the data is kept on hard disks in encrypted form. This helps prevent any kind of data loss in case one's asset is stolen or gets lost during transit. For IT management teams, for people who are handling IT infrastructure, it is absolutely necessary to provide access for confidential information on need to know basis only. Try also to keep the information available to the intended user for the time required unintended access during this period of lockdown may lead to unmonitored, undetected compromises. Have VPN tokens that are hardware based. So you have a lot of free soft VPN tokens that are available, but they are as insecure as an unprotected internet. Avoid them. Use VPN tokens that come with your firewall so that it can be connected effectively. As far as possible, use pre-logon connect. Two-factor authentication would be a good value addition enhancing the layer of protection and security. During this time, because of the short notice and the challenges, a lot of organizations 
have moved their office desktops to that of their employees. This has created unique new set of challenges. Lot of previous generation desktops did not have easily connectable wireless connections. One needed to use external wireless dongles to ensure they can connect to the wireless. Having said that, Patch and virus updates are also becoming an issue when it comes to desktops. So let me pose a question for all of you. You can respond to this on the chat. How many of you believe that lack of mobility devices or bring your own devices or use of personal computers to operate in work from home is advisable during COVID-19. You have put your responses on the screen, on the chat box. So going for The fastest and the easiest way was to have a server backup plan in place. Organizations who operated on hybrid model or organizations who operated on cloud model found it easier and faster to move employees to operate from home. Organizations, more mature ones, who already followed principles of work from home also found this as business as usual. But most of the small sized organizations or organizations which did not require these connections or were not prepared with these connections, they found it really challenging. And there have been organizations who are suffering a business loss because of this unplanned strategy. Connectivity, a few of them, mature ones, have invested in the con connectivity for work from home operations long back. This has only accentuated the need for such solutions today. Operating across distributed environments has only created chaos, problems, disruptions, non availability of resources when it was absolutely necessitated. An application recovery strategy, speaking on the recovery, in case one had a connected cloud infrastructure, it was much easier and simple compared to organizations who had applications hosted on site. These are challenging times difficult for one to anticipate a disaster which is due to a lockdown and a virus which is not a computer virus is unheard of and the peculiarities in the strategy for resuming business as usual. Some of the initiatives that an organization can take is as far as possible, be mindful about the remote access that you provide to your employees. Ensure when employees connect to your organization, they have a secure workplace connection, which can be through VPN and Wi-Fi connectivities could be subnetted and as far as possible, ports closed to ensure unintended accesses are not created, unintended vulnerabilities are not established. Endpoint security, 
is also a useful investment the real necessity of which is now established scenario of covid-19 portals vdi like citrix are one of the most effective tools that can be used during this time it provides maximum protection with least bandwidth management so these are really good solutions as far as possible encourage employees to go for direct application access like webmail sharepoint portal etc other readiness initiatives passport policies need to be revisited employees to be encouraged to change their passwords one needs to look at the routers and wifi passwords both at the firewall level in the organization and at the employee resident wifi router level passwords on routers have to be encrypted using wpa2 and wpa3 technologies some restrictions which could be a good practice for it infra team one is to enable session timeout and auto lockout limited networking capabilities so they can restrict bluetooth and other connectivity to the office assets encourage employees to have personal firewalls and have a system to monitor and prevent unauthorized application download awareness is the trick continuous communication of awareness to end users is something which needs to be mandatorily followed over communication is much better than being a victim of cyber attack always remember and employees need to be made aware that they do not click on unknown links any mail asking for any kind of financial approval however genuine it looks one needs to be extremely mindful before clicking one needs to cross verify with the person who has sent the request before approving the same some of the good practices antivirus manually update your antivirus on a daily basis do a full machine scan on a weekly basis very very important and relevant in today's time refrain from access to unknown and unwanted websites avoid something which you are not aware of do not click on links that you feel cannot be trusted using apple machines does not necessarily guarantee that you are safe from phishing attacks so be mindful of that in case of wifi do not log on to free and public hotspots stay alert stay vigilant and always reconfirm before you act simple principle of pause check reiterate and then act would help in these circumstances the more one pauses the better one is prepared and remains protected lastly to summarize beware of fake messages it teams to communicate regularly to employees making them aware of the threats risks etc be aware of cloud risks cloud is not necessarily safe unless you set up the infrastructure and build the safety and controls necessary reread your contractual obligations if possible communicate to the clients the current state of affairs 
and the areas that you not going to get or make protected share the limitations with your customers learn vendor limitations that service your organization be aware of your byod risks for hence sending out personal machines and enabling employees to use their personal assets beware of phishing mail android phones are more prone to risks compared to normal phones and enhance monitoring of your assets even if it means checking up of manual logs reviewing of systems manually and ultimately prepare a plan of sanitizing the assets when they resume back to normal operations so this, this is all that i have for you today and we are open to questions if any i'll be more than happy to offer clarifications and answers to the same thank you very much uh, for those insights krish uh we have a couple of questions coming up just give me a moment and i'll put them across to you and to both as well just give me one moment please hi please do share your questions i think this is an excellent opportunity to get some clarification and to be secure your uh, work environment even better we have one question krish uh, the the person is asking with employees working from home and in certain cases employees using their personal computers right now given the situation mm -hmm. is it safe to give access to uh, servers and also vpn access for such kind of employees and if there are any other steps to be taken to uh, prevent with uh, with data pilferage okay a uh, very interesting question and practically uh, that is what is happening in today's times two things that a person needs to be mindful of is when someone is using their personal asset it would be good if you can do a basic sanitization check before access is provided provided uh, providing access through vpn is the only way for usage of personal assets to connect to the office infrastructure understanding the need for this access monitoring the access and revoking the access when not necessary is extremely important when someone is connecting through his personal asset one needs to be mindful of looking through what was done during the period of access and whether the desired objective or purpose has been achieved and access may not be needed may be revoked on that same question krish uh, we have another one uh, for vpn access and people logging on uh, to servers using mobile hotspots and using data cards is it safe enough to uh, to allow such kind of connections if you have vpn access uh, then the mode of connectivity will not become a challenge and i said be mindful that when they are having access you are able to monitor and you are also regularly able to push the update of their antivirus and office management policies and patch updates so if you are able to get visibility of that because of the vpn being installed it would be good Also, it is advisable to have a pre-logon VPN. When I say pre-logon VPN, what I mean is that the VPN has to be configured in a manner whenever that whenever a person tries to connect to the internet, he cannot connect unless his office VPN is switched on and is working. Okay. 
Are there any more questions? Uh, we have just one more question. I'll just put that up. Give me one moment, please. All right, Krish, do you suggest any remedial measures to be taken uh, once things are normal and everyone's resuming office? So any checks on that for okay. you? So when you're ensuring back to office, there are some primary work steps that need to be taken. Uh, one, we cannot come out in the same hurry as which we did the work from home. So organizations will have to set up a quarantine sanitization strategy whereby machines that come back to office may need to be reviewed, checked for and scanned for. What they need to be reviewed for? They need to be reviewed for unauthorized applications or softwares that were downloaded when the machines were at home. They need to check for the status and health of the machine by doing a full antivirus and malware scan. Third, they need to sanitize and update users and make them aware in case there are things or actions which had been done unknowingly that needs to be reported before the machine can get back and connect to the core infrastructure. These are some steps or remedial steps that one needs to be mindful about when he decides to resume work back home. All right, thank you very much, Krish. Uh, Burgess, over to you for the closing remarks. Sure. Uh, Krish, thank you very much. On behalf of BBG, I am very grateful to you for your time. You shared with such valuable insights in the cybersecurity awareness especially at these trying and testing times. We're indeed very grateful to you. Um, I think many of us can take a lot of this information shared by Mr. Bhatt and share it with our IT teams to ensure we have some best practices in place. You see, IT heads are most of the time not aware of many security aspects, so this would definitely be a good idea. And these ideas can also be shared with our other teams, including your senior executives in the organization. Uh, see, a lot of these recommendations may sometimes require approval or support from senior executives. So things like that once shared with them would make your organization more secure because you have better support from your senior executives as well. Um, uh, once again, I would like to thank all the BBG members who were able to join the webinar and wishing all the members of BBG and your team at uh, next time a, a very safe and secure cyber experience and wishing you all a very healthy and safety, uh, safe uh, environment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Borges. Thank you very much, Krish. Thank you everyone for joining in. Thank you all. Bye. Bye-bye.